When you generate code with AI, you feel like a 10x developer until that one Friday afternoon where your latest AI-generated code breaks everything in production. You ask AI to fix it, but it just makes things worse, and that's when you will realize that you have no idea how to go back to the previous working version of your code. In this video, I'll fix that for you by teaching you the AI-native way to version control your software. Whether you are a vibe coder who's never touched a terminal before, or a seasoned developer writes to commit messages by hand, this video will help you because I'll teach you what actual senior engineers like me know. It's not about the code that you write today, it's about being able to travel back in time to working code when things do go wrong so you never get stuck again. To showcase this, we're going to be working in a real project. This is an auctioning demo application that I create to showcase the difference between Python and Java and to show how you can use real software engineering practices when you're doing AI native coding. Now, what we're going to be doing today is first initializing a Git repository. Some of you might be super familiar with Git, some of you might not. But Git, in simple terms, is a way to first control your software so that you can go back to previous changes and work on different branches when you're creating complex features that you will then merge into a main branch eventually to, for example, publish your replication to whatever cloud platform you use. Now, what I'm going to be doing here in Visual Studio Code, which is my editor of choice, is that I'm going to use my terminal and type in Git in it. I've already installed Git on my machine. Installing it is pretty simple. I'll add some links in the description. But when you add Git to your repository, you will actually see that a lot of things start to light up in Visual Studio Code. In this case, my repository actually already has a lot of files that I need to add to my version tracking. Now, the really nice thing is that this video is not just a generic Git tutorial. I'm going to show you how you can immediately apply AI coding practices here. So instead of manually adding a couple of these files, either with the UI or with the terminal, and then just creating a commit message to say what my changes were, I'm actually going to ask Claude Code to do this for me. Now you can ask whatever AI tool you use, whether it's Codex, GitHub Copilot, it doesn't matter. I'm teaching you principles that will work for the next decade and it does not matter what AI tool you're using, even if you're watching this video in 2030. So what I'm gonna do in my case is I'm just gonna start up Claude Code here in my terminal. And then what I can do is I can actually just get rid of these stage changes that I added before. And now what I can actually do is ask it the following. I want you to use git commands to see the changes I made in this brand new Git repo. Then split up these changes into logical smaller commits, each with a one to two sentence describing the change. And now what you will see is that it uses this command called git status. So actually by working together with this AI tools, you get to learn git commands very easily because they will actually use it in the right context. If I actually run that here myself in a terminal, you can see that it has a bunch of untracked files. You see more files here in the left in the editor because in this case, the terminal actually just tracks the whole folder. So all of these files in Java backend are actually untracked. I've not added them to my repository yet. So what you will actually see here is here on the right, Right, if we scroll down, it actually wants to add a couple of files to Git already. It wants to add the Git ignore, the readme, and the cloud files. And these really are just root documentation and config files. So once we actually allow for this command to run, and I type in git status here on the left, you can actually see that git ignore and the readme are going to be committed. So you can see here on the right that now it's going to create a simple git commit message for that, initial project setup with documentation and git ignore. Now, interestingly, it actually skipped out on the cloud configuration because in my git ignore file, I actually instructed to not push that into my repository because my Claude Markdown files contain some personal guidelines for how I like to write code. So that's actually on purpose, right? And a git ignore file is a concept that we can get to later. But for now, let's actually just continue here and allow it to create a commit out of that. So it creates a commit that includes those changes. And this is already our first version of the software. And this is really the essential element that we're learning today, right? We want to understand how to create different versions of our software and then be able to roll back. Some of you might have already done this hundreds of times, but if you are a vibe coder and all of this is new to you, then you can see how powerful this is, right? This is a real software engineering practice that you definitely need, even if you're using AI tools to do the bulk of the coding for you. 
now you can see that if we keep scrolling down, it's creating a bunch of extra commits. It's adding one for our database DTOs and exception handling. It's neatly dividing all of the changes. You can see here on the left that it's working through all of the files that have not been added to the repository yet. And it's important to do these commits in small batches because if you try to add everything at once, the issue is that eventually, you know, if you want to roll back a change, you have to roll back a lot of changes that you made over the past week even. So when you're working on your code, you should definitely commit logical blocks of work, maybe every couple of hours, so that when you need to roll back, it's much easier and you don't have to roll back a whole day of work. So while Clock Code is thinking, I just wanted to let you know that I noticed that most people watching my videos are not subscribed at all. And that's a shame because this channel does not focus on hype at all. I share real strategies for AI coding and AI engineering for you to be successful in the real world instead of just talking about AI and following the hype. So if you want to learn more, definitely subscribe and also check out our AI native engineering community in the link in the description below. But for now, let's wait until Clock Code is done and I'll see you in just a second. Now you can indeed see that it's just working through all of the changes. You can see here how very neatly it's first worked through all of the Java backend changes, and now it's going to pick up on the Python backend. And this is a great example of using AI to do the Git commits for you. You still have to keep a close eye on what exactly it's doing, but I'm not manually creating these different commit messages. I've already created the code, and I'm just asking Claude to split it all up into logical commits. So that's pretty AI native right there. And you can see that we're pretty much done now. We are just adding two extra changes here, and then we should be good to go. Once we have added all of these changes, what we're going to be doing is just checking out the log of our Git repository. So what we can do here in our terminal is type in git log. And I'm going to go ahead and make this all a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go and extend this window. And you can see how we have created all kinds of different commits. For example, here, there's a commit for adding the web frontend interface. There's a commit here for adding the Java backend build configuration. And all of these individual commits can be rolled back. In addition, they are attributed to a given author. So if you work with multiple people on a project, then this is a great way to understand what everyone has worked on. There are many different ways to visualize this. But for now, it's important to understand that just keeping track of the commits is the most important task that you have. Because what we're going to be doing now is building a new feature with AI that will have a bug or two. And then once we realize that the bugs are in there, we're going to actually refer to those changes so that we can actually put our application back into a working state. But before we add a new feature, I just wanted to quickly show you what this application actually does. So in this application, what I'm able to do is I'm able to create new auctions and then bid on them. So for example, I can bid 100 bucks on this mechanical keyboard, and there you go. So how about we go implement a new feature into this demo application, and then see how that interacts with this new Git repository. What we're going to do is we're going to add an anti-sniping feature. So what I mean by that is as the auction almost runs out, if you add a bit at the very last second, I do think some time should be added to the time remaining to give the others a chance to bid even higher, right? So I think that's a good feature to add. So let's go ahead to Visual Studio Code. And now let's actually clear out our Claude Code session. And I'm going to type the following. Let's add an anti-snipe feature where the auction is extended if a valid bid arrives in the last few seconds. So snipers can't win the auction at the end. We only want to implement this in Python and the web app for now. If a valid bid arrives probably less than or equals 15 seconds of the end of the auction, extend the bidding time by 20 seconds. So the really nice thing about a feature like this is that it's pretty simple to implement, really. So I can showcase how Git helps you keep track of versions and how we can actually roll back this implementation later. So while Cloud Code is thinking, I wanted to teach you another important concept about Git, and that's the ability to create branches. If I type Git branch right now, you can see that I only have a main branch. Now, if I'm working on my own on a pet project, I can just push code to this branch. But if you're working together with multiple people, or you're working on multiple complex features, you want to actually create a temporary branch for that feature. So in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and do git checkout dash B and create a new branch locally. And I'm going to probably just call this anti-sniping feature.
Now, of course, there is a lot that I can teach you about how exactly these branches work. And I'm keeping my explanation limited on purpose because I want you to just get your hands dirty and try version control on your own projects. And if you get stuck, you can actually get a lot of good explanations for these kinds of Git commands and the concepts from your AI code edit tool. The most important part though, is that you really don't need to make things that complicated when you're starting to learn Git, because here's the honest truth. Just using Git in a beginner way is already much better than trying to get your code repository up and running without any kind of version control. And that is what a lot of Vibe coders do and it's super dangerous. So with that being said, if we go back to Cloud Code here on the bottom right, you can actually see that it seems like it's done with the Python implementation. And I can actually see here, if I type git status, that actually there is also a change in web index. So this already shows you a nice advantage of Git. You can see actually what the AI code editor is doing. And this helps your AI code editor quite a lot too, because what I can do now is I can actually ask another AI agent to have a look at my code base to understand what changed. Let me actually prove that to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a new terminal and let's just open up Codex, why not? Cool. And I'm going to ask it to use Git status to understand what the latest feature is that we worked on in this code base. And now you can see that it autonomously calls git status and it will see the same thing that we're seeing where these three different files were changed. And based on that, it will actually understand, okay, I should check out those changed files and see what's up, see what new feature was actually added. And you can see just how powerful that is because the ability for the AI agent to understand your code base is super important. And you can't just pass the entire code base at once all the time, right? Being able to feed specific commits, specific changes to your AI agents will make them perform for much better. In this case, for example, you can see that it understands very quickly that the latest work is an anti-sniping feature for auctions. So from here, I can of course extend the feature, ask it more questions, etc. but it has a good baseline idea of what is actually being changed in this given branch. So that's super useful. So one small change that I added to make testing easier is that the front end auctions now only last 30 seconds. So let's go ahead to our browser and refresh it. And now actually when I go ahead and reset the database and I create a new sample auction. You will actually see that there's only 30 seconds remaining and I can go ahead and bid like usual. So let's go ahead and bid hundred bucks on this programming book collection. And then once the time remaining hits 15 seconds, you will actually see that something special starts to happen. So we're almost there. And now you can see that the anti-snipe is active and actually I can go ahead and prepare my bid here. So let's go ahead and prepare a bid of 150 bucks. And we're gonna actually bid this at the very last moment. So here we go, four seconds remaining. Two seconds, let's do it. And there we go. We did place a bid, but the anti-snipe was also triggered. So now there is actually 16 seconds remaining on the clock. So that actually works very well. What I want to do now is I want to go back into Visual Studio Code and create a commit because I clearly finished a good piece of work that implemented a clear feature. Now I could ask Cloud Code to do this, but I'm gonna do it manually so you get a better idea of how to do it yourself. So if I type git status, you can actually see that a couple of files have been modified and I can go ahead and commit one single file by typing git add and then pasting the file path. Once I do that and I go back to git status, you can see that that file is ready to be committed, but I want to commit all of them, right? If I know that a batch of files is all ready and good to go, I can actually type git add with a star and then we'll add them all in one go. Now I can go ahead and go back to git status and then you can actually see that all these three files have been added. So that's great. And I can actually create one clear commit for all of these. So I'll type git commit dash M and I'll give it a nice message. I can, for example, say implemented the bid sniping feature. There we go. Now I've got a commit ready to go. And actually the nice part about this is that you can see now that we don't have anything left here in the source control because we have actually just you know, committed everything and we're up to date. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to introduce a bug on purpose because bugs are always common in software. And then I will show you how with Git, you can actually revert that bug very easily. What I want to do now is I actually want to change this bit of logic on purpose. So what I want to do is I actually want to break this logic by making it so that Actually, the sniping logic only works if the time remaining is more than or equals to 15 seconds. Now, this is a super simple example. Of course, real life bugs are a little bit more complex than this, but it will show you how you can use Git to revert mistakes. So what I'm going to do here is just do a blind commit. I'm just going to assume that I made a correct change here and I'm going to just say git status 
git add star. I'm just going to say git commit dash M and I'm just going to say improved the anti snipe logic because again, I'm going to act like there is no bug at all. But in fact, if I now go to my web browser and I go refresh and I create a new sample auction, then you will see that there's a problem going on here because if I bid, let's say 500, 500 bucks right now, then you will see that the anti snipe has been triggered. It's not showing up on the front end, but it definitely does trigger every time that I create a bid now. You can see now it's already up to 55 seconds and now it's already up to one minute and 12. So that's actually the opposite of what we want. Now, the great thing is that you can let AI coding tools analyze your Git changes and it will be able to revert the broken changes as well. So I've cleared out everything again and Cloud Code has no context about my repository whatsoever. So what I'm just going to do now is explain what I see and ask it to find a git commit that could be potentially wrong and that it needs to revert. So basically what I want to do now is say our bid sniping feature is broken. It was worked on very recently. Can you investigate the git logs and potentially find a wrong commit to revert? So in this case, you can actually see that Cloud Code starts to work. It's going to examine the recent Git commits by checking Git log. And you can see in here that we have that commit 1F9BE7F improved the anti-snipe logic. And now it's actually going to check out what those different commits did in terms of the changed files, as well as the actual content of those files as well. So if I press Control R here, you can actually see that Cloud Code is reading all of these different files. And it also sees that actually I broke the logic in here, which you will probably pick up on because it's a pretty simple bug. So by typing control R again, I can go ahead and just check out in a short view what Cloud Code is working on. And you can indeed see that it found the bug. So now what it says is it recommends me to revert the commit. So I can actually run git revert. In this case, because it recommends me to, I guess I can just run it manually. And then if I type that here on the left in my terminal and I press enter, you can see that now actually I create a new commit that reverts the previous commit. This kind of git reversal is very important to learn because you're actually able to create a very clean tracking record for your repository. So you will actually have commits that introduce a bug and commits that revert those broken commits. This way, it's very clear when someone introduced the bug and fixed it, and you have a good audit trail of everything that happened inside of your repository. So in this case, I actually have this kind of terminal window where I have to actually edit this revert message. So I'm gonna press Control C and then type QA, and then I'm gonna go ahead and press Enter. If you never use a terminal before, that might be quite intimidating, but you can actually set up Git to even use a text editor if you like. There's a lot of ways to configure that. But the main point here is that now we actually created a new commit that reverted the anti-snipe logic again. Now, the great thing is that you can learn a lot of these Git concepts by just asking the AI agent. So for example, I can ask it, how do I find the last commit ID? And then you will see that it will respond very easily. And then it will ask me to run a specific command, namely git log dash one. So let's go ahead and run that in my terminal here on the left. And you can actually see here that this is the full commit ID. The commit IDs that we saw so far were actually the truncated commits. Um, this is nice, but I don't actually know what this commit contains. I need to confirm whether it actually reverted that piece of code that we wanted to revert, right? So of course, fix the sniping bit feature. So what we're actually gonna do now is ask Claude code, how do I check the contents of commits? And I'm going to go ahead and paste that commit ID. Whoops. And of course, I do want to add a little space here just to make sure Claude's not confused. And then now it will give me another command that I can run. So I can actually run git show to see the contents of that specific commit ID. So I can go ahead and copy and paste that. And now you can indeed see if I make this a little bit bigger, that in this case, the logic here was fixed such that the sniping check actually happens when the time remaining in milliseconds is less than or equals to 15,000 basically 15 seconds instead of it being more than or equals to. So indeed, this is the fix that we were looking for. Now, this video showed you that whether you are a beginner or an expert, by combining Git with AI native development, you can see here how you can actually give Cloud Code or other AI tools mundane Git tasks while you're still in the driver's seat and you're able to refer changes when necessary. If you want to learn more like this and become a real AI native engineer, you should check out our community in the link in the description below. And then I hope to see you there.